Hi, and welcome to another exciting episode of OCD TV. Tonight's topic, we're doing a grab bag. We're going to jump through a bunch of topics. Hope you can keep up. I'm really excited today with me tonight, two men whose Facebook postings are so politically polarized that you could float a magnet in between them. <laughs> to my right, Keith Martin, and to my left, Brian Connors. I screwed up his name last time. I just want to clarify that now to the one person that may have noticed. Our viewer. Our, our, our one viewer, <laughs> yes. Well, maybe both of them. Oh, uh, right. There might be two. They could be. Well, that's, 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 that could be a whole topic by itself. What? The, 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 the viewership of, <laughs> of public access. Tele that, a lot of oh, shows, public access, a lot okay. of public access shows go on to become okay, hits. Mystery saying, Science Theater yeah. 3000 okay. got its start on public access. Public access, yes. Our show, that'd be a very short We're show. We're the one show <laughs> on public access that doesn't get political. I have to fix that. I don't know. <laughs> we, we're offering something different. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> if you say so. I, wanna, I wish I had a magnet on a string for my joke, but oh well. All right. So moving on. So our first topic, we're going to talk about new Star Trek versus old Star Trek. Vote Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> new Kirk. New Kirk. New Kirk. Um, um, so to get this topic started, taking the position of new Trek is Keith. Okay. Well, I, I, your, your position on, 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 well, you came up with actually a rather eloquent defense of the series. I did? <laughs> no, okay. Like five minutes ago when we were mishmashing oh, yeah, backstage. Okay. Well, one of the things that I like about the, um, the new Star Trek, obviously, it's, you know, more action, you know, I'm, I guess I'm pretty a shallow individual when it comes to these things. Um, you know, being, A, I'm a Star Wars guy. Uh, be, you know, versus, you know, when you had those um, conversations about, you know, what's cooler, Star Trek, Star Wars, blah, blah, blah. You know, I was always a Star Wars guy, you know. And oh, yeah, especially as, as, as Gen Xers. Yeah. You know, Star and then, Wars and then was as, exciting, and Star Trek was what my right, weird uncle watched. My, yeah. my dad watched Star Trek, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, so with the, with the new reboot, obviously, it, it's kind of more an action-y type thing going on, more explosions and things like that, yeah. uh, lens flares. Um, <laughs> Gotta have that lens but that, flare. That's J.J. Abrams. But, um, well, Disney's probably going to put a kibosh on yeah. that, I'm sure. So, but, How but in much general, those so, lenses cost? <laughs> so, I do, so I do appreciate a lot of the you know, old Star Trek, uh, particularly original series or um, Next Generation, um, the cerebralness of it. Um, but you know, sometimes you just wish for a few more, you know, yeah, I, space I, dog fights. For I, think, instance, I think I <laughs> think what's at issue, at least in my opinion, is is that if you look back at the Star Trek movies with the original cast, they were actually for the most part intended as action movies. Mm -hmm. But when you have the DV episodes, you can get into the cerebral nature. Of yeah. it. I mean, it was episodic, so you could deal with, mm -hmm. you know, these sort of esoteric ideas, particularly about the um, and things like that. The later. Um, Shows like uh, Voyager or right. Deep Space Nine or um, Next Gen to some extent, which was you have or Enterprise for that matter too, which probably, right. actually I, I missed that earlier when we were talking about that. One of my favorites, um, the short um, like four episode arc. Right, but I, well, I think a lot story. of the fans. I think a lot of the fans. I don't know. You maybe you can clarify this for me a little bit, Brian. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the fans sort of lump Enterprise in with the new movies. Because they tend to have the same sort of disdain for it, or a lot of. Like, I think. I think there's a, there's a there's a a, a segment of the older yeah. Trekkies that really don't like the new movies, and it seems to me it was the same people. When I say same people, I mean my former brother-in-law. The same people who were complaining about Enterprise were complaining about it for the same reasons that they're now complaining about the new Trek movies. See, I can't lose any sleep over that because Star Trek is one of those shows that has explicitly has multiple continuities so mm -hmm. you know you can you can pretty much retroactively say that enterprise is part of the abrams verse because of certain things that changed mm -hmm. whatever well anything technically that happened prior to right um the arrival of um the naruta there whatever it was um still happened in regular continuity it was yeah. whatever happened after that event in the main continuity, in the main continuity, Kirk's father didn't die. Right. right. Well, that's what I'm saying. That event is what killed him. Everything after that is like a um, 
you know, alternate reality. Alternate timeline, well, consistent with, with modern mm -hmm. um, models of, of, of how the universe works based mm -hmm. on quantum mechanics, although I think, right. personally, not to get off topic, but I think at some point when they have a unified theory, they're going to throw the multiple universe thing out of the window, but mm -hmm. that's just my opinion. I did like they, when they, they took Zoe Saldana Zahura and they made her basically Hoshi Sato, um, which is, you know, well, probably basically what Uhura would have been doing in the original series. Yeah, but well, they, they made her a much well, they made her a much better character in general. I mean, mm -hmm. Uhura was essentially the Enterprise's reception. Yeah. I mean, yes, there she was a woman. She was black. She was prominent. She was on the show, but all she did was answer the phones. They didn't yeah. let her do anything else. I mean, right. Nurse Chapel, same thing, or like the Captain's Ensign, depending on mm -hmm. which season it is and. You know how much trouble the actress got into behind the scenes. <laughs> well, I mean, but they—they, they, I mean, they were shown. I mean, there was an attempt, especially in the original pilot, yeah. there was an attempt to 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 show men and women um, as equals in the original series, but they didn't really get away yeah. with it to the level I think that they yeah. wanted to. Yeah, and that's why rebooting the original series with a modern value system, I think, at least in my opinion, um, enhances it. To a certain extent. Well, I think I mean, all my love to the original series. But. Yeah. Well, that that kind of brings me to you, you kind of put me in the position of the defending the original series. Now, this is kind of a devil's advocate thing for me because, as I pointed out before the show to my castmates, sure, um, fellow panelists, fellow panelists, better term. Uh, my personal preference is Deep Space Nine, but it's kind of hard to underestimate just how groundbreaking the original Star Trek really was. It's very much a product of its time. Mm -hmm. I mean, the special effects were eh, okay. I mean, they probably could have done a little better, but you know, on a TV budget. Yeah, they had a very small budget and they yeah. did what they could. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the simple fact that Uhura was on there, I mean, well, I've... that was a big deal. Yeah, I mean, I've heard, I believe Michelle Nichols told the story once about thinking about quitting and then I finding that. out that, you know, as kind of stereotypical as her character was, she was a major hero to African-American Trekkies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, I read something about that today, actually. I, as I understand the story, the, she, had a, she had had a conversation with Martin Luther King or somebody, can I, that might be, when was he assassinated? That might be. 68. Okay, so that might have been it. Yeah, there was. She, as I understand the story, she had a conversation with Martin Luther King, or some other leader in the civil rights movement yeah. that convinced her to stay on uh, on yeah. board the ship, just because of what she represented to the community. And I think that's that's a pretty big deal. And I think you. I mean, to a similar but slightly lesser extent, you know. I mean, you had Chekhov and Sulu. I mean, George Takei nowadays. Geek hero right. is like everybody's right. Everyone favorite loves, funny uncle. Uncle George. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> you know, even then, you know, Asian American. Um, At a Jap time when yeah. Asians were being depicted yeah. as the big enemy in, in comics and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and I mean, George Takei himself had been in the internment camps, too. I mean, he's yeah. got a whole yep, his family play exactly. going on right now about that. Mm -hmm. um, Called the Legion. Right. Right. And even uh, even the character of Chekhov, I mean, granted Walter Koenig always liked Alfred Bester better, because Chekhov was kind of annoying, but the simple fact is that was the 1960s was probably the beginning of the era of detente and putting a Russian character mm -hmm. on a, a bridge right. where all, all of the Earth characters were essentially American except for possibly Aura. Mm -hmm. Um, that was a huge thing in those days. Yeah, mm. that was that was a big deal. If I remember correctly, apparently Khrushchev was a fan, but I don't have documentation wow. for that. I mean, I don't know. I think, uh, <laughs> no, what, what, whatever Trek. five minutes they were allowed to see of every yeah. episode. But <laughs> anyway, moving on to our next topic. I'm going to jump ahead here. Um, comic book superhero movies. Who's doing a better job, DC or Marvel? This is going to be a short topic. <laughs> um, I may have been just trolling a little bit there. Marvel? <laughs> yeah, DC's kind of hit a, hit a bit of a rough patch. Except I'm going to upset some of our, my Facebook friends. <laughs> I like Man of Steel quite a bit. I like it too. 
I haven't seen it. Um, mm-hmm. um, it, it. Okay, let's talk about Man of Steel for a second. Okay, every single one of you that loved the Dark Knight, that gushed over the Dark Knight, that went on and on and on at what a genius Christopher Nolan was, <laughs> and how the dark, gritty, realistic Batman was what you wanted, Man of Steel was the movie they thought you wanted. <laughs> you made it. That's right. You made it. <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. Moving on. <laughs> um, I think. But you're absolutely um, right. Yeah, yeah. I think. I, th- I think of a lot of the discussion about the sequel to Man of Steel, where they said, "All right, now we're going to follow this up and we're going to put Batman in it." Which, again, I liked the movie. So, so to me, it just seemed like, why doesn't Superman just get his own sequel and why not reboot Batman? Although I think they could have offered Christian Bale enough money. Mm. And just decided not to. But now mm. they're talking about throwing in Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman which seems, it just seems like a slight to me. Mm. You know, I, she's a I think big character. trying to uh, push up the uh, timeline on Justice League. Yeah, well, I think so too. But it just like having her, maybe like in a cameo or something, I don't know. Mm. It just Wonder Woman deserves her own movie. Green Lantern probably should get a reboot. Mm. But, but I think... There may. I didn't hate Green Lantern like other people did, well, though. No, it wasn't that bad. No, that's all right. No, it, it didn't like suck. Ryan Reynolds, he's fine. It didn't suck. Like Waterworld, it didn't suck. Uh, <laughs> I will say, I saw someone do. I, I don't know where the cartoon came from. Somebody just posted on Facebook, but somebody uh, had a did Wonder Woman putting her hair up, and Batman saying, "Oh, you're in for it now. She's got the scrunchie out." <laughs> suggesting that if a, the, the suggestion basically was that if a that, that they should there should be a trope where a woman put a female superhero putting her hair up means someone's about to get a beat down. <laughs> I, 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 I guess. I mean, <laughs> you uh, do kind of wonder though. All that gymnastics is probably a lot easier with with yeah. a tight hairdo. Well, I would, I would think. Wear the ponytail. Right? I, guess, well, I guess. I don't know. But, well, how? I mean, she's got the crown thing to hold it. Yeah. Back, but I, I don't know. I mean, that, but, I mean, if they're gonna do a Wonder Woman movie, I mean, we have to talk about the outfit. Mm. I mean, I just it's, go with it's, go with the Wonder Carter one. That, that I guess it's just kind of silly. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, it's but exploitative but in it's a what sense. It is. I understand that, but it's just you know, it, it's it's hard to take the character seriously. Yeah, I always. I mean, in that sense, honestly, the the long pants and bomber you, jacket look you, is just. You, I think it's better. If you, if it's more change. appropriate. I yeah. Think. In terms of, if you want people to take the character seriously. Yeah. Well, what's the current one in the whatever they're doing in the comic? Book you know, it's changed a couple of times. I'm not really sure. Because obviously, I, I would think that you want to do whatever they're doing currently in the comic book is probably what you want to do. Yeah, I mean, well, that makes <laughs> sense. Actually, in fact, Superman's costume in Man of Steel was. Or did take its cues from the comic book. I mean, they dropped mm-hmm. the uh, they dropped the red undies. Yep. Um, but that's which which touched off this huge firestorm, like <laughs> big deal. Well, people were just upset he's not Christopher Reeve. I mean, that's I you well, know. Well, I, I, yeah. I mean, I think here's the problem with Man of Steel. You 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 were standing in the shadow of the first big superhero right. movie, the one yeah. that really. Uh, uh, brought it to the public imagination that you could do this, mm-hmm. um, and so and I think and I think there was definitely a mindset where they said, okay, we're going to have to go in a different direction, mm-hmm. uh, rather than then try to imitate it, and then and then and then just be be forever compared mm-hmm. to do it as as inferior, like Superman Returns, which right. was awful. Right, <laughs> making it all the more ironic that. If you were to pick out two iconic movie superhero characters, they'd probably be Tony Stark and Wolverine. I mean, I guess. I, I, well, I mean, I'd say Superman and Batman. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you ask the average person to name five superheroes, four right, of them would right. be DC superheroes. I mean, and the first two would be Superman and Batman, mm-hmm. and the one from from Marvel would be either be Wolverine or the Hulk. And, and well, yeah, I'm just, but I'm just Spider-Man. saying from the perspective of the younger younger fans, you know. The ones who watch, you know, the Star War, the Star Wars original trilogy, and wonder why Darth Vader doesn't recognize his own droids. It's 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 a different yeah, there, perspective. There, there's some fan theories out there where they try to show he was trying to protect R two D two and C three PO, but yeah. I mean, again, that's that's. I mean, you're. I've seen one after uh, I've seen them all. I mean, I mean, we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll see what happens. What how, I mean, there, how close did Vader actually get to R two to actually try to recognize him? <laughs> I mean, it's just 
any other mech. But, mm -hmm. but I mean, but yeah, I mean, bringing up these little nitpicky little arguments like that, it's more about the substance. I mean, again, my, my position on Wolverine, you know, I'm sort of done with antiheroes. Uh, you know, and 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 he's griddle, gritty, and he's brutal, and he was the character that, like, when you're six, and uh, yeah. all like the eight and nine year olds are telling you that, like, oh, you shouldn't like Batman, he's lame. You shouldn't like Spider-Man, you should like Wolverine, because he's got claws and he hurts people, and it's sort of like that. That to me seems like a departure um, from from. I mean, it's good for Wolverine. It's good in that sense. He's the best example, but all the copycats. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of the characters from. You know Rob Liefeld's tenure. Yeah. I mean, there's some, there are some great antiheroes, but they're not, you know, they're not really in. I mean, unless you consider Blacklist nerdy or Breaking I, I, Bad. I, I, yeah, I mean that's again. I'm just talking in terms of comparing Wolverine right, to right. other superheroes. I mean, I get that people like the character. I like the character. Mm -hmm. Trying to copycat him to repeat that success <clears throat> or the yeah. success of X Men in the '80s. I mean, Lobo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Lobo yeah. is a terrible character, and no one should ever draw him ever again. <laughs> they should kill him off. He should suffer permadeath. Yeah. And, and we, we would all be better in a world without Lobo. I don't know who Lobo is. Well, I think there's an awful lot of people who think we'd all be uh, better off in a world where Rob Liefeld wasn't allowed to touch anything involving drawing ever again. As, 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 as I understand it, he's actually a pretty cool guy, and like people in the industry like him. I have heard you that. Know, you know, and that's, that's probably why, you know, despite all the criticism, you know, he he's, he still gets a lot of work, and, and and you have to sort of look at it maybe differently. Like we make all these judgments about Rob Liefeld based on the art that nobody likes and the dumb characters he creates and some dumb things he's said in public. Mm -hmm. But everybody says dumb things in public, and yeah. I think and, and I think I think there's a little bit too much hatred yeah. leveled at him. Um, I don't think anybody deserves that. That's just my opinion. I don't know. I mean, well, I sort of think. I sort of think of it you know, so I take my parents are aging and I take care of them and I sort of feel the same way about Hallmark Hall of Fame. The movies are terrible, but right. they must pay well because they get mm. some big name talent. It's harmless. I mean, they managed to drag Shannon Elizabeth away from the poker table, so that's gotta be something right there. Yeah, you're making money there though. <laughs> something like that. I <laughs> not touching that one. Let's talk a little Star Wars. Let's Star Wars, Star, okay. or, or, or uh, oh, well, let's talk about our expectations um, um, with the new series, because I think, I mean, we haven't really gotten seven. on that, and we're talking about episode seven. Here's what I'll say about episode seven. Um, if you examine the existing six Star Wars films, the overarching story is the rise, fall, and redemption of Anakin Skywalker with uh, Palpatine as the central villain. Mm. Both of those characters are dead. That story arc was resolved. Anakin Skywalker restored balance to the Force by destroying the Emperor and breaking the chain of uh, the Sith line, you know, from Master mm -hmm. to Apprentice. Mm -hmm. That's done. Literally anything they do, no matter what it is, if it's a clone, if one of them comes back to life, it doesn't matter what the villain is, what the central conflict is, whatever it is is going to seem contrived. Yeah. Well, everything's contrived. Well, yeah, but that's everything's contrived. Is that's not? I mean, yeah, in a sense, but that's not really valid criticism. Well, no, well, well, because no. well, you don't necessarily have to criticize yet. Obviously, well, you don't know what they're going well, what, to no, do. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, it's going to give us a sense of contrivance. In other words, watching it, we're going. It's just going to seem disconnected. Well, it depends on it's how they connect it. I understand that, but it's just because it, obviously you still have existing characters. What, I, what, what I'm saying is that's going to play a role in, how, in people's enjoyment of the film. Well, plus there's also, um, you know, the Clone Wars movie, the holiday special but, of the uh, 21st century. Well, to be in defense of the Clone Wars movie, I saw that in the theater because my son was eight mm -hmm. at the time, and, and, and he and the other eight-year-olds really loved it, and, sort of, and me and all the other eight-year-olds' dads just sort of looking at each other going, eh. Yeah. <laughs> Shrugging, um, and the series, as I understand it, got really good. Yeah. After yeah. about like, this, and so so, because of that movie, you have a series that's beloved by the fan base. Yeah. So you have sort of a mediocre film. I'll say this much: the dialogue was still better than anything George Lucas wrote, wrote. for the prequels. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's let's well, be honest. Well, the di <laughs> it is not. Let's be really honest. 
the dialogue in the prequels is just as bad as the dialogue in the original. No, it isn't. Yes, it no. is. It's all no. the same. No. It really is. No, you're just telling yourself that. No, it's true. Not true. Have it you, is true. The no, dialogue no, is, is just as bad. No, the consensus is not on your side the, on this one. Have voice. you ever <laughs> read the novelization by Alan Dean Foster of the first movie? Yes. It was written from the final draft script using Lucas's dialogue. Mm -hmm. Of it, Star Wars A New Hope, you're saying? Yes. Yes, I've read it is terrifyingly bad. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying that the, it, that you're making my point. That's, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm just saying, that's a low point that I don't think anybody can undermine. Well, but I think you're but, making my but, point. But, but you, no, you, you have to understand, The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi had other people writing the scripts in the dialogue. Yeah. It was wittier, but it, it was better, it wasn't as wooden. Bad. No, the, the, the that, delivery, no, the, it's wooden it, and it's that's still, that, that's it's, delivery. No, Empire Strikes Back's got like one really bad moment. Luke yeah, Skywalker on the scaffolding is just terrible. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, there's some other bad moments, but it's not as bad. It's a lot smarter than what Lucas yeah. produced for the prequels. No, the Look, is just all bad. I'm basing this just on bad. is the level of cringing I did during the prequels, and well, it was since I didn't way cringe more, at all, I have a bad feeling easy, about please. this conversation. <laughs> you liked you you liked the Dungeons and Dragons movie. I just said it wasn't horrible. Well, I didn't no, like no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> the second Although, one's actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, oddly, the the direct to sci-fi uh, sequel was 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 the fan the ones fans wanted to see. That, that's the movie we wanted. And it was and it was hokey and it was campy, but it was fun. As, mm -hmm. uh, the first one, I think, the first one was hokey and campy, but. It wasn't didn't really play to the fans, and I think that well, was, was because the it really wasn't a D and D movie. Well, I don't know. You see, I, okay, this is what I'll say about the first. It had, it had the th name, but this is that what was I'll the, this is what I'll say about that. If I had written that as an adventure and ran it for you guys and you played it, you would have thought that was the best adventure we ever played. Oh, a cool one, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. I would say look, the best. All I'm saying is, <laughs> and 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 there would have been more terrible jokes told told during the gaming session. So. Of course. <laughs> but I'm standing by my position that 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 the dialogue in the and prequels is terrible. It's all the same, and it's and you're just you're just telling yourself. No, I'm not. It's yeah. the truth. You're in denial. Truth hurts. I'm right. Truth hurts, Steve. I'm, I'm correct. Truth hurts. I don't just. You're, you're looking. You're looking I'm at it. You're looking at it through I'm the lens of I'm, nostalgia. I will bite you. I got. I got. I got a Louisville slugger named Truth. That <laughs> it I will does hurt. hurt. You with. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just telling you that. You know, you're looking through those rose-colored glasses of oh, the original. I so great. You know, again. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe that's pro and that's also also the problem with the sequels is that you know with with episode seven, eight, and nine is that we're looking at um, comparing it once again to the original trilogy and I think a big problem and, and I don't know about adult fans of the original series mm -hmm. or those who were adults when they saw it you know, originally say over the age of 18 or mm -hmm. 25 when they saw it originally you know and, and their whether, whether or not you know they thought they were cheesy and hokey like the prequels are mm -hmm. but still like them I don't know um, well, plus, I, I mean, the stage, different I mean, at the time because I mean, obviously they'd never seen anything like well, it. Well, no, they hadn't seen anything like it. But the other thing, I mean, you talk about cheesy dialogue. I mean, we were talking about movies that were, at that were popular when you know, uh, the Dukes of Hazard and Chips and <laughs> yeah, and, and Knight Rider were leading the Nielsens. And right. I don't yeah. know if you guys have ever gone back and watched those, but they don't hold up well. They have not held up. <laughs> Like Battlestar Galactica, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, late seventies, or, or, or the A Team. You know, these yeah. these are shows. That well, made, those, we, those are the mid eighties. So. The A, the, from the few clips I've seen in the past few years of the A Team, it, it, it's so stylized, it's almost kabuki. It's it really fun. is. It's it's, it's a fun. fun show. You know what it was? The first, if you watch the first season, it's a lot more straight up action. It's a lot more brutal. I mean, yeah. people actually die. Yeah. And and after the first season, there were complaints because a lot of kids were watching, and so there was a lot of. There was there, 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 they, they toned down the violence a lot in, in the later seasons. It's in some ways it's almost like you, you know, you almost expect to see signs and galleries up on the wall, and you know, then Peter Graves comes in and has a chat with Hannibal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> kind of that's that kind right, of. So, well, yeah, by the end of the series, so it's that kind of the, style that ruled for about twenty years, I'd say. What's the uh, best sci-fi fantasy show on television right now? The best sci-fi show, you know, actually, if you're not watching Almost Human, definitely check that out. Almost Human. It's it's dipped a little bit in the ratings since its first episode mm -hmm. because surprise, surprise, they put it on on Monday nights up against Monday Night Football. <laughs> not <laughs> who, a good idea. Who watch sci-fi action shows? Men. What are men watching on Monday night in the fall? Football. Football. <laughs> I mean, we complain about things being canceled by Fox, 
Yeah. But at least Fox green lights this stuff. But you would think they somebody was they should have put it on Sunday night. But then again, they'd have to, you know, bump one of their Seth MacFarlane shows. I'm actually that. enjoying uh, Agents of Shield. I'm a little disappointed in the direction they went with that, but uh, it's growing on me. I was kind of expecting like a Marvel C lister every week. And yes, that yeah, hasn't I, happened I didn't yet. want that. I, I like what we got because it's Agents of Shield, not. I understand Avengers, that, but the movie. they should be or bumping. Avengers, it, they the, should be the bumping into these characters. What I'm really excited about. I'm sure they will. I mean, I think what I'm really more excited for is what they're going to be doing on Netflix, which. Oh yeah, with I the. Mean, um, you guys Daredevil heard about this with Daredevil and. Power Man and Iron Fist, and who's the fourth one? I don't remember who that character is. I don't know either. But anyway. But I'll tell you something. Net Netflix already has a good uh, good record as far as uh, in original production, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I just think it's interesting that, that Disney by themselves wouldn't front the cash yeah. to do a full-blown superhero series, but when they partnered with Netflix, yeah. you know, and, and, I, and I think this is going to be huge for Netflix. Yeah. Because every nerd... Is, is, is going to watch this. Yeah. I mean, even casual fans. I mean, my son and I are probably going to binge watch the, all four series. Of course, the uh, highest rated show on the uh, Sci Fiction Network is uh, Friday Night SmackDown. Yeah, so but that, that makes see, me again, happy. The, yeah, I, <laughs> but, but you see, SmackDown could be on any. Yeah, I know. It could be on but, any channel. But that's why it's so funny that it's outrating everything that sci fi because, is. Because, 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 because wrestling fans are, are a dedicated base. My point is <laughs> that it, wrestling doesn't need to be on the sci fi channel. Yeah. <laughs> It's just you know, it's just, like, it's just like just like reality shows don't need to be on the Discovery Networks, but they just went for lowbrow programming to get higher ratings. It's sort of like, I don't really have a reason to have a cable subscription anymore. Uh -huh. Although honestly, your average smart is kind of nerdy anyway. Exactly, we are. Yeah. I will say what I am, what I've been watching is Blacklist, and I mean it's more of a crime drama noir kind of deal, but the way the way it's done, I mean if you look past the fact that everybody's watching it just because they like watching James Spader do ham and cheese. It, it's very much in the uh, sci-fi spirit, if, even if it isn't actually sci-fi. Mm -hmm. yeah, from, from what I hear, the writing's really good on that show. Yeah. And again, it's James Spader. And yeah. He's just going to be compelling either way. And I have guilty you know. pleasure of Supernatural, but we'll, well leave that alone. I mean, again, that's that's still within the that's that's within the auspices of nerddom. I know. Yeah. You know? It's one of <laughs> those guilty pleasures. But yeah, I mean, it's 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 a compelling show. I mean, among other things, you can't. It's okay, I watch True Blood. Okay. <laughs> if you, I mean, a, a, you cannot go wrong with a well-written villain protagonist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple, especially a sympathetic one. I mean, it's like you don't. I, I mean, I'm starting to talk TV tropes here, but I mean. Yeah, uh, right. I'm done. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, I think we uh, we actually covered a lot. We touched on some subjects that uh, I wasn't expecting. Yeah. And got into a lot of interesting stuff here. Maybe some topics for some other shows. Yeah, anyway, we'll thanks again for watching. Out. If you have any complaints, um, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, good night, everybody. <laughs>